we use RabbitMQ a lot in, in um, projects that require reliability and basically is, is a message queue. So the application send message to the RabbitMQ that normally run in cluster and we have consumers that consume those messages. So that's what I'm going to show you. So this Docker file installs um, Rabbit on the, on the container. Then it copies the file requirements. Um, then it installs the requirements, which are the libraries in, in Python that we need, which in this case is Pika. Pika is a library that allows us to work with uh, um, Rabbit from Python. And then I copy the, the Python examples. Um, bye bye, best solo mid player. And um, then I copy a file name loops and get message as well. And um, I give it, I give um, executability and I run this loop. I give executability to this um, loop process and I run it. Basically, when we run a container, we need something to be happening in the foreground. So I have created a while, a while true basically, so an infinite loop. And here I start the consumer in the background. See you later, Japar. Um, I started, nice to meet you. So I started the, um, the consumer in the background and then I have um, a small loop that sends message and the number of messages that are sent is randomized in bash um, and then it sleeps five seconds um, the application doesn't need the computer doesn't need you to sleep uh, five seconds or one um, but this is so you can see so the humans can see <laughs> what's going on okay um, and um, this are Send get message. That's the loop. This is the. This is what produces the message. So I send Unicode because I want to sh to you to know how the Unicode is processed and how the messages are processed. So basically, what um, what we are doing are publishing message that it says hello world with the with the timestamp, with this message at the end testing Unicode, and then we print on the screen. This, this message, um, then it close the connection and that, this is called from the bash uh, shell script uh, program. And then we have the consumer here that um, uh, will be watching for new message and then it will be calling the callback and the callback just uh, prints the message that has received. So you see, um, and that's it. We are gonna, we are gonna see this in action. So I always create a um, shell script to, to create the containers, um, which make, makes more easy to repeat. And basically I define a name for the image and then I remove the old image. Um, and I create the, the container with no cache as well. This option is to, so things are not cached and um, it, um, runs the docker file from the start from the scratch because docker docker use cache and it will cache any any of the lines that successfully uh, were processed so all of this if, if i change for example here in this line um all of this will be keep in cache so those steps will not be needed to replace unless unless um, i specify no cache so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna modify the build docker because otherwise it will take forever. It will take like five minutes or, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you live. So it will take a bit of time. It, it will ask me for, for sudo. So now it has uh, removed the old image and it's doing all the steps on the Docker. Oh, is this on top? Yes. So it's, it's processing all of, all of those steps. Now it should be installing the dependencies with apt. This, this line, 
So we do this thing, adding the ampersand ampersand, which in bash means that this will always be executed if the previous step works. And we put in one line because um, Docker works with layer, with layers. So every step is a layer. So if we do some operation in here that involve creating files and we don't clean them, on the next step, even if we delete the, the files, uh, this space is not released on the layer. So what we do is do we install anything we need and we clean at the end in the same line. That's why you will see many scripts that do lots of things in the same line in order to reduce the space used. And you can you will see probably many of them like this, which is more appealing visually, like things are more clear. That's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to see this way. And as you can see, I'm installing some tools like MC, which is my midnight commander, htop, less, strace, system trace, zip, gzip, links. Links is a browser based in text. So you can, you can browse from a text interface. It's very, it's very cool. I mean, it's, it's incredible that this can be done. So if you run links on google.com or oh, the cookies, I'm going to say that no, I don't want to keep cookies. No, I don't want cookies. You can select this. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's, let's try with my blog. So you can see, you can browse my blog from here in text mode, which is really, is really handy. So, and read everything, it's very well made. So if, if you are in a terminal, it's very handy. Break, I break in multiple lines like this in Python. So now it's running the run service RabbitMQ server start, which is line 24. And it's progressing. Now it's installing the requirements from, from here. And here we go. And then we can start the, now we can start the container. Um, mm -mm. And um, my, in my script, I always output and these tips, like you can just run the container like this. Um, and I name the image RabbitMQ and I will name the running container as RabbitMQ as well. So when I run this, now it's doing the demo. So it's starting RabbitMQ um, service first. And now it's sending a random number of message. In this case, two message and sleeping five seconds. Uh, in this case, three message and, and I added the timestamp. And you can see that uh, this is un Unicode. But when the consumer gets the message, it receives um, as a sequence of bytes because uh, you can see that with the B, it's binary. The consumer is getting binary message. So that's important to know if you use RabbitMQ, uh, that the message that will be consumed will be get as, as, um, as byte stream. Of course, it's very easy to convert to a string, but um, it's nice uh, so you know. And then, yeah, and then uh, with the way I started um, the container, uh, I cannot kill it. I cannot kill it from command line because um, I don't have interactive, interactive control over the, over the session. Uh, so I have to, to kill it with, from another terminal. So... So, um, mm, so here is the, the name, so I will kill it or I will stop 
uh, rabbit mq. It will take few seconds and then it will be killed. Yeah, that's it. So I was doing a uh, flipped. So that's it. So the name for my container will be this one. And this is the image. And I was doing the opposite. So you can see this is the name for my container. So now I started it inter uh, interactively. So I should be able to stop it with Control C. Yeah. And with Control C, I stop it. Another thing that you can do is um, start your, your container with an interpreter. For ex so I will start with Bimbash. So now I am inside of the container, which is super cool in order to troubleshoot. You see here is the, the program that we call in the loop send get message. This is what is uh, defined in the um, in the Docker file in here. This is the program that will be looping and we can we can do the things manually if we want. For example, I can start the service. Yeah, th this trick is super cool because sometimes you need to do troubleshoot containers and um, you need to have an interpreter. And uh, yes, I have started being bash because I'm um, my image, the image I, I use for my tools are Ubuntu normally, uh, you see, uh, but from other tools you may use to need uh, bin shell, not bin bash, because um, they have not bash installed. Because um, the idea with the container is to install the minimal amount of space. So the, the thing with, um, with the, the thing with uh, setting a name is that if you want just one instance, makes sense to have always the same container name. If you have, if you want to spawn several, uh, this, it doesn't make um, sense. And the thing as well is that Docker PS shows the running constant um, containers, but if you specify dash a, yeah, talk to you, to, to you later. If you specify dash a, um, you see what has gone uh, what has been going on in there for a while. So you see all the history of containers that um, has been stopped and created. And I have passed the pipe hit, so only the header is uh, displayed. And exit zero means that uh, it exited without any error. Exit 130 means that it exited with an error 100, the error code is 130 and so on. So in this case, you can see that the different containers that I have been creating, uh, name RabbitMQ, RabbitMQ Interactive, RabbitMQ Interactive 2, RabbitMQ Interactive 3, and, um, and then the image where they were based. And you can access by the ARD if you prefer. Uh, it's completely up to you. Um, so wh what I'm going to show you is that... Um, if I run this, which is the original way to work, and I will have this working on, on the foreground. Uh, uh, I can I can access from another from another place as well. I mean you don't need to you can have your container working and you can open a shell from another place. So you don't need to not being used the foreground application. So if I do docker ps uh, we see that this is the container that is uh, running in here. So inst now instead of docker run I will need to uh, use docker exec, I think it's the dash it as well, and I specify the um, container name and the command that I want to run, bin bash, yeah, here we go. So I am inside the docker container, if I do ps, uh, ps-a, 
we can see that the processes that are running, so is that loops and get message dot shell, uh, Python 3, sleep. Um, we can see all the processes that are running there and um, that uh, basically what the container is doing. So we are in, inside the container as well, but with a uh, bin bash. And I can, I'm, I can be bad from here as well, and I can kill processes. Like if I want to kill um, the process one and the, uh, 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 and the process six, it should stop. Yeah, it stopped. So what it happened is that the I stopped the program that was in the main loop on the container. Um, and so the container had nothing to do and it exited. And as the main container, as it exited, um, my session with Bash also exited. Uh, 